Uh, my role is going to be to uh, basically tell you the story of this surprising universe that we've been discovering, we astronomers, for the last roughly 30 years. And uh, as Maurizio mentioned, uh, one of the surprising features is that the universe is almost all invisible. I'm going to show a total of five videos. The first two are going to be actual astronomical data. So what you'll see will be uh, pictures of stars and galaxies and things like that. And then I'm going to show two more videos that are completely theoretical. They're produced by powerful computers. But what they're going to show is only the invisible stuff, not the visible stuff at all. And then at the end, I'll try to take us back to Earth. So to start with, the universe on different size scales looks like this. Of course, uh, we live in the solar system. Uh, Earth is the third of the four rocky planets. It takes light only eight minutes to get from the sun to us, about 40 minutes to Jupiter, 80 minutes to Saturn, a few hours across the whole solar system. But it takes light 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way galaxy, our home galaxy, where we live at the bottom of this first V, about halfway out from the center, about 25,000 light years from the center. Our entire galaxy is just one spot on this larger scale picture of what's called the local supercluster. The center of the local supercluster is the Virgo cluster. That's the densest concentration of galaxies for 100 million light years around. It's about 60 million light years from us to the Virgo cluster. And we're going to start by taking a trip across that distance, first starting within the Milky Way. You probably will recognize that constellation that's prominently in the center, but in case not. And there's the Milky Way. And we're going to head especially for the sword underneath the belt. We've measured the distance to about 100,000 of the near bright stars. And all that data has been put in the computer along with images from telescopes. So in the center of the sword is this thing, a glowing gas cloud called the Orion Nebula, lit up by especially the young, very hot, luminous stars that have just formed in it. As we pass the Horsehead Nebula, we're now 1,500 light years from home. The Rosette Nebula is another one of these stellar nurseries where new stars form. They don't live very long, but while they do, the really bright ones light the whole thing up and also clear out the central region. This is another nebula, it just means cloud in Latin. But this one is not a place where stars are born. This is where a star died. It was seen on Earth in 1054 AD. It's the Crab Nebula, and you can see the Crab Pulsar, the remnant neutron star, flashing in the center. Explosions like this supernova produce so much dust that it blocks our view in the disk of the Milky Way. So let's rise up and out of the disk so that we can see the magnificent panorama of a great galaxy like ours. As the galaxy disappears into the distance with the large and small Magellanic clouds, two big satellite galaxies, and a bunch of other satellites, the other bright galaxy that's coming into view is Andromeda, the other big galaxy in the local group. And a smaller spiral galaxy, the third spiral nearby, the Triangulum Galaxy. As we pass through this glowing gas cloud and Triangulum, we're now two million light years from home. Now, everything that you can see is a galaxy. We're heading to the Virgo cluster over here, but we're taking a scenic route past some of the prettiest nearby galaxies. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now what we're aiming for is this chain or filament of galaxies. We're jumping into it here, and then we're going to ride down it as we approach the Virgo cluster. Galaxies tend to form in these long chains. And where the chains cross, you get these big clusters. So far we've mainly seen disk galaxies, but now you're starting to see big balls of stars. We call them elliptical galaxies. And this journey ends on this gigantic elliptical galaxy at the center of the Virgo cluster. It has a jet coming out of a black hole at its center. The black hole at the middle of this galaxy has a mass of four billion times the mass of our sun. Well, that was just a short trip. The local supercluster is just a dot on this much bigger scale where the distance from here to here is a billion light years. So let's look at the distribution of galaxies on this gigantic scale. There's been a huge mapping project called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey that's been mapping millions of galaxies' distances and taking pictures of hundreds of millions of galaxies. So let's look at the information, the distribution of galaxies from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. We're moving away very rapidly from the center of the diagram. That's where the whole local supercluster was. The galaxies have only been mapped in certain directions. First of all, only in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, the mapping telescope is at Apache Point, New Mexico. And then the galaxies in the particular direction that's mapped here are all lining up in front of each other, so it's a bit hard to see. But you can see that there are these empty regions surrounded by what look like walls of galaxies. To really get a good sense of the distribution of the galaxies, we rotate the image. And what you see look like slices through a sponge. That's what the distribution of galaxies looks like. These long filaments surrounding cosmic voids. Backing still further away, we see the most distant galaxies in blue, the quasars. And now, in this multicolor image, the heat radiation of the Big Bang the cosmic background radiation, we call it. The temperatures are slightly different in different directions. This is the entire sphere around us. And these different colors correspond to differences of a few millionths of a degree, which we can easily measure with our current instruments. So the mapped galaxies in white, the mapped quasars in blue, the cosmic background radiation.